Hey, welcome to the channel where we show you how to put some prep in your step. Today I want to talk about scaffolding and how you can achieve that using the new rows step. Traditionally, if you wanted to scaffold your data, maybe fill in a row for each day, week, or month, even if there wasn't data for that date, um, or if you just needed to uh, generate rows, expand it out based on what you were trying to do with the data set, you would need to have uh, an input file that either had um, you know, like a calendar table that had all of these dates that you could join to, or that was just um, a list of numbers that you could use to kind of expand your data set. With the new row step, you can generate that without having to have that additional input. Um, so you can just, you know, create a fixed scaffold, or you can do a dynamic one, like, like with a calendar table that's updating every day. Um, so let's dive into it and see how we can apply this. So I've just got uh, two input steps here just to kind of demonstrate a use case where I've done something similar um, and just to demonstrate how you would create one from an input step that doesn't have you know what you think it needs um, so I've just got two files here one has got um, some return data so just the return IDs dates and the, um, the like dollar amount and then another one sale ID sale date and amount so sometimes you'll run into a situation where you've got, you know, a couple of different tables that they all have dates and you're trying to kind of look at that date and see what was going on there, the totals um, and the trends. But uh, maybe, you know, both tables don't exactly have every single day in the data set. So if you try to join on those dates, um, you might be missing some days or you're not, you still don't have a true list of every single day and what's going on there. Um, so here's where you can kind of use that to generate your calendar table. And so what I can do here is I can just take a clean step and just to be safe, you know, I've got dates in here, but what I can do is I can create one and I'm going to say minimum date, right? So I want to look at the first date in uh, my data set. So I'm going to say fixed, give me the minimum sale date, right? So this is gonna give me my minimum sale date in the data set, which is fine, but what if my other table has dates preceding this? Well, to be safe, what I can do here is I can say, um, let's say scaffold start. And I'm gonna just use the date trunk function to say, I wanna start at the year of my minimum dates. So it's year minimum date. Okay, so here's my scaffold start date. It's starting at the year of my minimum date, so that should capture anything here. Obviously, depending on the date you're working with or the data sets you're working with, um, you can adjust this value, but as long as you know that your starting point is gonna capture all of your, your table, then you should be good to go. And I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna change it to a date. So now I've got a starting point for my scaffold. And now that I have that, I don't actually need any of the other fields for this branch, right? So I'm gonna remove that and call this scaffold range. Okay, so here I'm just creating the range of values for my scaffold. So my start point is taking the year of my minimum date. And now for my end point, I'm gonna say scaffold end, and I'm just gonna use the today function. So I'm gonna say date today. Okay, and so there, now I've got a range of values. Um, and it's so every single day, if I've got this flow running every day, it's going to update the end of this range. And then um, that way I've always got it up. I don't got to worry about, you know, setting a calendar table that goes through the end of the year. And then at the beginning of the next year, I've got to go back in and update it. It's just always going to be dynamic to what the current date is. So now what I can do is I can just use my new rows step. Um, I've got values from two ranges here, or, or value ranges from two fields, so I can go from my start to my end, and that is going to create this column here, and so I can call this, um, I like to call it snapshot date. And so there's my snapshot date, so I've got one row now for every day between the start and the end point. So we'll call this, actually we'll call it calendar table. And so here I could actually just go ahead and remove these fields. Now I've got my snapshot date. And so now here's my calendar table that I could then take this data set to, right? So I've got, uh, let me just go ahead and do a join here. So I'm keeping my calendar table as my 
primary table, right? And so I'm gonna take my snapshot date and return date, join those. And I'm actually gonna do a left join here because I want, I still wanna carry over every date from the calendar table, um, but I just wanna be able to associate the any of the return dates with that. And so we call this um, join returns. And so now if I wanted to, I could take this then, and here, let me just add a clean step. I like to always evaluate my clean, my, my joins. And so now you can see I've got a day here for each of these um, returns, right? But then for days where there's no returns, I've still got that row represented in my data set. So now I can take my sale data and join that back here. And let me just lift this up here. I'm a little picky about my flow structure. Um, so now I can take that and I still want to carry over from the right. I want to, because I still want to carry over from my calendar table. Um, so now I can join my snapshot date to my sale date and then there you go. And so now, um, no matter what, even if those two tables don't have the same dates, I'm using that calendar table as my primary table to ensure that every single day has a row. And if there's any sales or any returns on that date, they're gonna be captured. And so now I can aggregate them to that day level, see trends at a daily level, and I'm not gonna be missing any of that. So, and then if I wanted to, as another step with these null values, um, I could go in and replace these with zeros. But that's just one way that you can use a calendar table or the new row step to generate a calendar table that's dynamic. Every day is gonna be updating and I didn't have to use a, like a dummy input sheet. I created it from the, the main input. So I've got this branch here that doesn't necessarily relate to any of this data other than the fact that I took the minimum date and uh, just turned it into something that I could, felt was like a, a safe starting point. Um, so that's one scenario where you could use it. Now, um, there might be other scenarios where you need a scaffold um, but that's just integers. Maybe it's a list of one to a hundred, one to a thousand that you can use to sort of dynamically generate rows um, based on the values in your data set. And so one way that you could do this is I'm going to just drag in another input here. And so if I wanted to create a scaffold from here, I could say, I'm just going to create a step here. And I want my scaffold to start at one. So I'm gonna call this scaffold start. And I'm just say one. And so now that I've got that column in there, I don't need any of these three fields. So I've got my starting point. And so here's where you can kind of adjust it to whatever you, you know, need it to be. If it's gonna be a fixed scaffold, maybe you know that there won't be anything that um, needs to generate beyond 100 rows, then you could go here and create a scaffold end and say 100. Now with uh, integers, if you want to generate new rows with an integer field, it can only, you can't use the um, values from two fields. It has to be values from a single column. So to get around that, you just go here and you pivot and you drag both of these two uh, pivot columns to rows. And so now I've got um, this scaffold start and end. And now you're gonna see here that it's kind of duplicated. And the reason why it's duplicated is because if you kind of go back here, the data set itself still has, you know, the original number of rows. Just because you removed everything, it's still got those number of rows. So what I can do after this clean step, is I can throw in an aggregate here and I can just group by both my fields. And this is just gonna deduplicate my data. So deduplicate. And that's just because there's just this unique combination just one time in the data set since I removed the other fields. And so it's only gonna return one row. And so I'll say scaffold range. So we've got our scaffold range. So we created a range of one and a hundred. And then we deduplicated the rows to only give us one row with that combination. And then we pivot them into one column. And so now that they're pivoted, I can remove this field. And so now I've got my scaffold, which starts at one and ends at a hundred. And now I can go in and say new rows, values from one field, scaffold, and it's gonna go ahead and generate rows between um, one and a hundred. You could even use this to do some data densification. 
um, something that you see a lot when you're using sigmoid charts, Sankeys, um, anything like that. So this is this would be a good way to kind of do that work in prep. Uh, that way when you are connecting to your data set, all that work's already done for you. Um, so there you go. So those two ways, there's one way you can create a calendar table, one way you can create an uh, integer scaffold, and both of those without having actually having to have any sort of like additional file. Uh, what I would do in my flows, if I was needed this scaffold, I would then join this back here um, and use the conditions I needed to generate those rows and expand it out. Um, so those are just a couple of ways that you can use that step, generate what you need it to. You don't have to worry, you can stay in your flow. That's the nice thing about it. You don't have to kind of go outside, create an Excel sheet really quick, come back in, join it and do all that. You can stay in the flow and do it as you're kind of working through and brainstorming your solution um, maybe you think that the scaffold is something you need, so you kind of work it in there. Then maybe you realize you don't actually need it, so it's easy to kind of go in and remove. You didn't have to, you know, create any additional connections to achieve that. Um, so yeah, this is, um, you know, definitely the more that I've played around with it and applied it, um, I found a lot of use for it, especially the calendar table. It's something when you've got a bunch of different data sources that have that date field, but they are, uh, related to different things, like there's different factors contributing to that specific date in that row, the calendar table is a nice way to tie everything together and make sure that you're really comparing things on the level that you want. Um, so that's it for today. You know, nice, simple technique. I hope you can apply it. Um, let me know more of what you'd like to see, and I hope to see you in the next one.